This is the signature. And when you see that, you will almost certainly see a membrisco. Okay. So that's the first uh, manifestation that is not a model. The second manifestation is uh, some nano devices uh, exhibit uh, frequency dependent parameters. And I, I want to show you one example uh, was published by uh, one of our colleagues from Berkeley, Louis, Professor Louis Cohen, many of you probably know that. Well, of course, they all know his uh, Miyamoto. But what they showed is that uh, this is a nano core tube with boron carbon and uh, nitrogen. And what they sh show is that uh, at the nanoscale, using just simple electromagnetic uh, analysis, they came up with a model that mimics uh, the physics. And it, the model consists of uh, addition from the publication. And the inductor is series with, it, with resistor, except that, that the inductor is a function of frequency omega as well as the resistance. And, and of course, the resistance is normally smaller, so this is, a, a, they call it a, a inductor, in that, but it has a little parasitic. But what's interesting, of course, is that they did, because uh, they, they did, or did not, yeah, I didn't know, but, but uh, uh, the, when you say you have something that's a function of omega, you mean that it, you're doing sinusoidal signal, because otherwise what is of omega? Okay. And so if you apply uh, a, a signal that is not a sine wave, of course, if it's linear, it's still okay, you can use superposition, but as soon as you throw in a nonlinear element, say a diode, all the waveforms will no longer be sinusoidal. So this total meaning the, the omega, uh, and I'm, I'm just making a, a, a hypothesis, a simple equation. So suppose this is here omega, omega squared, omega 4, and omega 6. Uh, what does it mean then when the signal is not sinusoidal? It, it has no meaning. It's totally uh, meaningless. Okay? So that's, that's uh, is the problem, is, is, is that a, a, whenever you see something that's frequency dependent, it is not a circuit model from my perspective, or circuit perspective, because it has no predictive ability. Uh, what I'll show you later on is that in fact, you could use uh, uh, some of the elements that I will introduce to later today, with Membrisco is one of them, and, and in this case, you can convert that into a, a differential equation, and these are it's going to be defined later on in my talk. And the whole thing is what I call a Lagrangian one for that I don't have to have, have talk about it. So what I'm saying is that it is possible to make sense out of this and so that in the case when it's linear, this reverts to the frequency de dependent uh, behavior. So when you see something that's frequency dependent, that brings the bell that you're on the wrong track. Okay. The third a mistake I consider is that many devices, uh, or at least some, uh, exhibit what I call time-dependent parameters. And uh, the example I'm going to show you here uh, uh, has to do with the neuron. This, this is a caricature neuron, but what we're talking about here is the axon, where, where you have this axon potential. And this is the model of that, where it's made up with resistors, uh, Interpret uh, uh, with repeated uh, the uh, circuit models like the red red box here. And this red box is given by this circuit, and this is the famous uh, Haskin Huxley uh, circuit model that led to the Nobel Prize in 1961. And the model uh, 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 is remarkable. So this is not a case of wrong modeling. Uh, it's because it did give you the correct uh, result. And this is what you predict, and, and this is an absolute picture. But the, the problem here is that Husky and Huxley uh, call these two resistors time-bearing resistors or conductances. In the sense that uh, uh, they can just say this is a uh, 10 c man or whatever. They say that you have to solve this, uh, but find this by solving a bunch of differential equations. And, the, and then for, for the given input, you have to do that then, you will find a time variation. Now, whenever you do that, you, you see models like that, there's time variation parameter, it is almost certainly, again, a, a flag that you are on a wrong track. Uh, but because they have this equation correctly, the right uh, empirically, it continues to be a remarkable model. So this is a useful model, except that it was incorrectly interpreted. But because of that, it threw into all kinds of confusion. 
they were modeling that up, up, this is a measure from a squid uh, uh, axon because they're very big. And you, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the 40s and 50s, uh, scientists have measured the small signal impedance of this model. And uh, in particular, <coughs> Professor Cole, who uh, many people thought should have shared the Nobel Prize because it was his technique that led to the possible measurement by, by Hoskin Huxley. And uh, I did it. And anyway, he, he found from this measuring uh, this uh, small signal impedance of this axon that, uh, that the imaginary, that first of all, it's not a pure resistance, it has an impedance, so change of frequency, but more, most significant is that he found that over certain frequency, uh, over certain parameters, the impedance has a, the imaginary part is positive. Now, when you have a positive imaginary part of the impedance, it means you have a reactance. You have, you have an inductor in other words. And this is, this is shocking because uh, uh, of course discovery of the inductive reality in the squid axon was shocking to the point of being unbelievable. But many, many of you should start to look around in the brain and see where is this inductance, you know, or where is it? And of course they never found it, it, it wasn't there. And they could never call it anomalous. They, they, uh, this is the generic term that and it remains today and not properly understood. And, uh, so I call this uh, Huskin himself. Uh, Huskin had struggled in vain searching, uh, I didn't include uh, uh, how Stephen Huskin was a mathematician. It was Huskin who was a uh, physicist. Uh, he struggled in vain searching for a physical interpretation of the screen action inductors. He failed because he had mistaken the action for a time bearing conductor, which, when in fact, it has a very simple interpretation. Uh, if the sodium and potassium channels are identified as membrane. In other words, uh, he had realized that the two elements that he incorrectly identified as time plane conductors of membrane missile, then all of this anomaly would disappear, everything would be understood. So, uh, in fact, in view of this model, which is a, a realistic model, it follows also that actions are made of membrane uh, because those are the two key elements that, gen that led to the, uh, the actual potential. And as uh, Stan Williams uh, just said, the synapses are also made restores. And there is a difference though, the synapses are non-volatile, whereas uh, uh, the actual, you need a power supply, uh, which is the ATP molecule, that's with it, uh, a solid potassium, so, uh, uh, sodium power. So there are two kinds of membrane stores, the non-volatile type and the uh, type that breaks power supply. They're both important. Uh, <coughs> That perhaps not from your perspective, because they, it, it has to be uh, it to be volatile. Now, the last example I'm going to show you is at Josephson Junction, uh, that, uh, as most of you know, uh, got the Nobel Prize in 1973 uh, for uh, weak junction. And Josephson's model showed in his derivation that he has a capacitor, a resistor, and then the element that he said is, is described by the equation that the current is proportional to the sign of. Uh, the integral of the voltage, uh, this is the, the phase difference function, but uh, he didn't know what it is, so he, this is the symbol introduced by Bella, by the way, for that. And then in the subsequent papers, Joseph has shown that uh, uh, if you want to be a, a more precise, there is a, another component of current that is due to the quasi particle pair interference. It is normally very small that can be neglected, but uh, to be uh, more precise, he said that there is another component here, and he didn't know what it is. And he said that this is a component, the current is proportional to the voltage, except that the conductance is proportional to phi. Well, uh, we now know today, and you see today, that this, uh, this component that he didn't know what it was is in fact an induct, a nonlinear inductor. And this component, I put a question mark that normally is, is not important anyway, but for today's talk, uh, it's important because it, it is, in fact, nothing but a memory store. So, so these are the sort of motivation for my today's talk to show that, that uh, there is a need for uh, a, a more, a deeper understanding of, of uh, circuit theory aspects of modeling. And so, from a circuit theoretic perspective, uh, I consider what I call an axiomatic uh, nonlinear circuit theory, where I define uh, uh, things, uh, devices, 
and without using any device physics at all, uh, we, we start with an uh, uh, device, uh, maybe a, a, a rock from Mars, and you attach a couple of uh, wires and found that it actually could conduct current and, and, and that makes it an electrical device. And you want to know what, what, uh, how to characterize it. So the, the obvious way to do is, uh, and this is the only assumption I made in axiomatic thing. I assume that I don't even have to define what is the voltage or current at all. I simply find that there is such a thing called a voltmeter and, and there's such a thing called an ammeter. And you connect, and there's such a thing called a voltage source that pumps any voltage signal you want and such a thing called a current source that pumps any, that you can generate any current signal you want. So this is the uh, axiomatic. You assume that <coughs> things are possible. Nothing else. You don't need any physics. And then, uh, so, so you can, uh, by virtue of this assumption, you can perform all kinds of measurements. And, and now, so the, a device, you want to uh, find a, a device model that will predict what it is. And, and, and I will tell you a perfect device model a perfect device model is simply an analog clock up table. This is a Gedanke experiment, it's totally useless, but just imagine that you go through this, put in all kinds of voltage you want, and you measure the current, put in all kinds of current so you want to measure the voltage. Every possible pair, you store it in a whatever uh, uh, database you want, that is the perfect model, because given any, you put in any circuit, the, the signal is going to be one of these, and the output will be there, and, but because this is a conceptual uh, a model, it's perfect, but it is uh, impractical. So, <coughs> so you, we try to develop simpler models. Hopefully, the model will be made up of combination of simple basic elements. And the basic elements are what we're going to talk about today. So, so the goal of a device model uh, is to predict the response of a uh, device to any input without actually carrying out the measurement in the lab. And, and which means it has to be predicted. Okay. Now, a useful, of course, uh, device model must reproduce the input output behavior to within acceptable accuracy. It, it's not going to be the perfect model, it has to be within reasonable accuracy. It should not confuse one device nature from another. And so I call that the model must be simple, but not simple. Not simply in the sense that you confuse one device from another. Right? Not simply that you confuse the memory stock from every system, for example. Okay, so uh, with this with this introduction, I now uh, would simply repeat what uh, uh, briefly what Stan uh, William had mentioned. So I started by saying that okay, if you, you have this four basic circuit variable that you can measure. The voltage, uh, the, the current, the charge, and the, and, and, and the, and the, and the flux, uh, and this big, again, we call this charge and flux just as a net, it's not, no physics, it's just that this is the symbol for something you integrate, uh, and this is the symbol when you integrate a current, okay? And so these are already related, and the function of a device, if, if you can find it, say if it's a, a Martian rock that you found that the only measurement follows a, a single value, that's important, not is recent, single value relationship between uh, either voltage as far as current or vice versa, I call that element a resistor. So that's my definition of a resistor. And of course, if that relationship uh, is uh, happening to be a straight line, then we have the Ohm's law, and we revert to the classical definition. So, so a resistor, therefore, in my perspective, is just a, a two terminal device where it obeys a well-defined relationship, and in that case, uh, each operating point would have a slope, and the slope is for the smoke signal persistent. That's what uh, the classic uh, uh, circuit theory that all of you learn. And now, if you do this, you can uh, define similar uh, context that if a device relates between only voltage and charge, I call that a capacitor, which reverts to the classical, but if this is a thread line. Likewise, if it re relates, if you find that all of this measurement, this Gedanke experiment, always follow a relationship between only the uh, current and flux, I call that the inductor, which reverts to the classical inductor. And finally, if you take this axiomatic definition, then it's completely obvious that there is a missing link here, and that missing link 
is something that relates between charge and flux. And since it wasn't available, I introduced a separate symbol for that, uh, and that is, I call it the memory store, uh, because uh, as you already know that it has the behavior that it can remember things, uh, and it has memory. Okay, so, so the, uh, these are the four sort of basic circuit elements uh, that uh, you have read widely already from uh, the Williams paper, and the memory store is the fourth element. Now, uh, we also know that uh, if you take an arbitrary uh, memory store curve, flux as a function, uh, phi as a function of Q, you take uh, the ripple of both sides, you end up with uh, V, the voltage being defined in T, uh, and, 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 and something that is a, the coefficient that is a function of Q times the, uh, the Q dt is current I. So, so this is just Ohm's law, except now that this uh, is a slope, and it's not a constant, and that is called a memory resistance, memory resistance, okay? And if this curve happens to be, for simplicity, uh, only two, two segments, then this, the slope being the resistance, you, depending on whether you are in this region or that region, you have two resistors, and this is basically the bistable, the, the uh, uh, switching, uh, resistance switching that we're talking about here. Okay. But in general, the, 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 you can have curves that are smooth, uh, and, and this is so that you can have many, many different resistors to one, and this is exactly what a neuron uh, wants when you do synapses. You want to learn uh, to do a different task. You are changing the operating points, for example. Okay. All right, so this is so far all, all review, but what's important Again, is to realize that when you have a memory store, uh, it's quite obvious when V is equal to M, the, the memory system is current, or you can write it I as M, uh, 1 over M, or the conductor times V. And then you can please assume that, that M is, is not zero, okay? And, and so, so you can either talk about 1 over that, or it is not zero. And under this situation, you can clearly see that if, if the right hand side I of V is zero, the other side will be zero. Which means that for any voltage waveform that you observe in the resistor, then whatever corresponding current is of course not sinusoidal. So that, but what's important is that it has to go through the same zero at the same time. And this is the, 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 the fingerprint of the resistor. So it's very easy to see whether you have a memory store or not. And experimentally, if you observe some measurement where they don't go through the same point, you know that it's not a memory store. And so the fingerprint, therefore, of, of a memory node is, is, like I said, pinch hysteresis loop, which is quite different from the classical uh, inductor history that you think of because it doesn't go through the origin. This is the signature that I am referring to. Okay. Now, one of the things that you can prove quite easily is that uh, as you increase the frequency, that when you trace the, the pinch history slope, the, uh, as they go high and high frequency, the loop is going to shrink. It, it not only, you will change shape, but the only change is get shrink as small as possible. When you go to very high frequency, it almost becomes straight line. So in the limit, in fact, a memory resistor becomes a linear resistor. It, 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 it could not tell the difference. And uh, so, so that's what one important prop, uh, proper memory resistor is that uh, it's corrupted by pinch history slope, whose loop area shrinks at, as you get higher frequency. The other property, of course, you can easily prove that, uh, by the way, you can prove also that for non-volatility, the memory store curve will always have to have positive slope, or, or, or I think not negative, okay? And this is why uh, all these uh, non-volatile devices have non-negative slopes. Now, what the consequence of the pinch history loop property is that, uh, unlike when you have a capacitor in, and the inductor with the initial voltage or, or, or current and you flip it on the light bulb, you would you, you, you flicker uh, momentarily, that means that you can store energy. You do that with a memory store with any initial uh, 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 charge or flux, nothing will come out and that's all just a manifestation that it doesn't store energy. Okay. And uh, also, yeah, just uh, to show they they're quite different behavior from the classical element. You would never, for example, connect a, a, a wire 
but it, or, or you call battery because you're just going to end up in uh, the battery exploding or this quite melting. Uh, but uh, there's absolutely no, no problem uh, if you put that in a battery. Uh, of course, in, I mean, Bristol, especially when this, because you make this zero, stop zero, so the current is absolutely zero, so this, uh, nothing is going to harm. Um, it's a totally different uh, behavior. Now, uh, I want to show you uh, as an uh, uh, example now. Go come back to this example of Lieber's paper uh, on this nano wire, non volatile memory. This was in 1902 or as I say. And he, Lieber showed that uh, if, you, if he applies a square wave of plus minus 10 volt and measure and, and monitor the current, it, it, you either get almost zero or, or a high current. <coughs> so this almost zero. Uh, and 800 milli semen, uh, nano semen. Uh, this is from from Lieber's paper, and, and then he also showed this uh, this three group. And now what I want to show you that, uh, as I said, if you change the frequency, this is going to keep changing. So it's not a model, but you can postulate a membrane curve, uh, make simple, just three segments like that. So when this is flat. And when you do that, and you apply what Lieber did, uh, and I pick these numbers so that you come out just like uh, Lieber's uh, measurement. Uh, so you apply a 10 plus minus 10 volt square wave. Now remember, you know that this is flux. So in other words, so you integrate that. When you integrate that, you have this thing, and then it goes through uh, uh, about 2.5 uh, volt before it hit, before it switches. Okay. So so the and, and because of the number I think you, you will see that it goes from zero to, uh, to, to uh, 800 nano sigma, exactly what uh, uh, Lieber showed. And uh, so, so I just show you that with this curve already, I can reproduce exactly the behavior as a switch. But if I, if I pick the, uh, 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 find the, uh, if I uh, apply arbitrary sine wave different frequencies, and let me massage this a little bit so that I can get a shape a little bit closer to liver, you will find out, uh, so, so this is not a shape, it, it, you know. Uh, and with that, you can see that uh, the hysteresis look is very much similar to, to liver. And in fact, you can massage this uh, uh, as close as you can to get this. And then the, but the difference is that if you change the frequency, this will change or the liver, liver didn't publish, it would, it would correspond to what, whatever you would observe, or almost like that. Now, here this is symmetrical, as Stan William showed in general, it is not, and it's very simple to modify that. You just make uh, this a nonlinear function of I, which is what uh, Stan did, and, and uh, uh, you would be able to shape the other side as, as well. Okay, so, uh, let me move on. So what the, we want to do is to show that there are many other devices that are not pure. Uh, I, this is what I call ideal memory store or perfect memory store. Uh, but, but inherits the same behavior that pinches through through. And this equation will do it. It's still on slow, except that there's no reason why that uh, uh, the resistance should depend only on, on the integral of current. It could depend on any uh, variable. In fact, could have more than one a vector, provided that you can derive the equation that relates them in the dynamics. And so, so this equation is what I called, uh, published uh, many years ago, called the Resistance Device with, with uh, Professor Kang, who is now the Chancellor at UC Merced. And, and uh, uh, this m would give exhibit almost exactly the behavior as as uh, 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 the ideal one, but it has additional flexibility. And uh, so uh, uh, there's no reason for to give them two names. Uh, in, in, when we public, I call it the device, but now I just call it memory store. Okay. Now, it, it turned out that the, the uh, nature is full of that, and it's what, uh, and I just want to use the simplest example, a light bulb. We all call a light bulb, of course, most of us, I thought it's just a home you know, you with a small current, you, you measure a straight is resistor, but uh, it's not quite true if you apply a big voltage because it hits up the filament and the filament uh, changes the resistor. And as you do that, a paper published 
1952, in fact, by Cunningham, uh, showed that it exhibit only distribution and that strings as frequency go to infinity. And, and uh, Professor Cunningham actually gave the equation. The, the, you can easily write the heat balance equation, and the heat balance equation would, would be just the voltage, heat equation. It's, it's something times current, and that's something depends on the temperature that obeys the heat balance equation. So the heat, the temperature is not a state variable. And so this is exactly an example, a good example of a MM mixture uh, where the state variable is not charged. Okay. Well, uh, there are many more uh, such examples that, that, that uh, I didn't have time to, to, to proceed. But I want to, uh, as I mentioned, I do want to introduce Another concept here. Well, it's not quite. It's just an obvious generalization. If I introduce the notation, uh, the, the exponent one to be the derivative, and and, and a min minus one mean the integral, then I can define uh, any device that constrains the relationship between the the the, the, the uh, exponent alpha v alpha and i beta. And I call it an alpha beta element. So, 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 so alpha v alpha beta element is nothing but just uh, a device that a two terminal device that constrains the relation between v alpha and i beta. And if I do that, then you can have it prepare a table with like a periodic table of elements. And, and when alpha is the voltage, and then you can identify that uh, zero zero as a resistor. Uh, uh, this point, uh, uh, 0 minus 1 in the past, so this will be inductor, and now the memory appears here. And uh, uh, my, the next speaker, my co author, uh, is going to show you that uh, the, when you go here, you will have the memory inductor, and if you uh, go here, you will have a memory capacitor. And in fact, you can prove that all of these devices along that are basically all memory store with increasing frequency dependence, and all of those are capacitor, they're all in memory, and all of these are inductor, and so far we have just the next higher hierarchy here. Okay. Now, I will end up with uh, an interesting observation here, which I call, uh, based on circuit theory, this is something I published in the 70s, uh, I, I proved that it is Impossible, I call it impossible uh, circuit theory in one, uh, says that it is impossible to build an amplifier using only two terminal locally passive nonlinear resistor. Uh, locally passive means that you have only passive slope. You can, I, I can give you any, you can use any number of them, I prove that you, it's impossible to produce a gain. And uh, the question is can you, can you make an amplifier uh, with only passive mem resistors? And uh, this is not only the answer is yes. In fact, uh, you can. Uh, so, so, so passive, passive membranes can amplify signals. It is possible to build an amplifier using only a passive membrane by rising it with AC voltage, analogous to a pump. So it's like a parametric amplifier. You have to pump it, but you can actually make an uh, amplifier out of that. Now, the next question is possible. Theorem two is that it is impossible to build an exclusive all gate using only two terminal locally active resistor and battery. Not only can get more uh, ambitious and say, suppose we may allow this like a tunnel dial thing, uh, but still you cannot make a, a, uh, a X all gate. And the interesting thing is that uh, you can ask, what can we build not only this one, but all other Boolean logic gates using only memory stores, without, without transistors. And the answer, of course, is yes, as uh, 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 Dr. Williams already proved in, with his uh, group. <coughs> you can actually do it. Uh, you can get all the logic functions with only memory stores. And more recently, there is a paper by uh, this reference here, which proved that you, can, you only need two for all of them. For all of the logic functions, you need only two. So, so all bullet functions are, can be uh, using only passive memory stores. And now the last 
result I was showing you is an impossible theorem three. Uh, it is impossible to build an oscillator using only two terminal locally active nonlinear resistor capacity. Now, if you don't have an inductor, I prove that that even though you have you have a, a tunnel diode, it's impossible to make it an oscillator. And uh, so, how if you inductors in other are, are needed if you want to make oscillator uh, with tunnel diodes? Question is. Can we build oscillators using only memory stores without the password and the inductor? And the answer is surprisingly yes. In fact, uh, although the author didn't realize it, uh, we only need two thermistors, and this was published already way back in, in the 60s, uh, and, and thermistors are memory stores as well. So two thermistors, no, no capacitor. And this is reproduced from the 1960 paper, uh, show that you can have oscillation so you can actually use only memory store to produce oscillators. The importance of this example is to show that basically you have you, you can you, you, you could in principle build anything with only memory stores if you allow also the, the locally active part. And you show now you don't even need transistors. So I close by saying my vision uh, is that I believe that by 2050. Then resource based nano electronic and I will completely replace transistor silicon technology. And I would even venture that if you wait another 50 years, by 2010, you can only find vacuum tubes and transistor circuit only at the store, it's not even it will disappear, just like uh vacuum tube has disappeared today. Okay. And uh, so this is this is the uh, the last uh, slide and I thank you uh, for your patience. You can get a negative resistor system with memory store, but it has to be, as I said, there are two types of memory store. The active type uh, would do it. You, you would have been back in negative flow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? So, so, so there are really two types of memory store. Uh, for the community here, we already done volatile type, and you know, the slope will always be positive. And, but uh, for the more future, which I feel is more important, is biological. Because our brain, basically, you think about it, it's made of synapses and axons. That's all, all of them. And now we, we know that axons are made of memory stores, made of, made of active memory stores. And, and the other synapses are also memory stores. They are non volatile memory stores. <clears throat> so, so for the first time, we realize now that we have the component, we have the tools to make a circuit that behaves like the brain. And this is going to come, I'm sure. Question then, uh, in 
Well, in, in, in general, uh, remember this, this element that I introduced, not an ideal element. In general, you, for a real device, I would expect you would need combinations of more than one type of these basic components. Okay? And uh, I, I have to know a bit more detail exactly what you have to answer your question. Any, any other questions? Yes. Uh, there is uh, the, some memory device, resistance change devices. Yeah, uh, Say it again. There is uh, uh, resistance change memory uh, which are operated uh, without changing the polarity. That, that use only only uh, positive polarity, such okay. as the phase change memory. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, but that the ID curve that. Uh, uh, Cross the, the, the origin zero point. In this case, it can, can can it be a, a, a ambition? Yeah, as long as it, it's pinched, it, it will be the the generalized type. Yeah, where, where you need a state variable. Okay, not not the, just just a constant times times q. Okay, and uh, but but uh, if you in, in in all of these cases, you you have to sort of figure out what state variable you have introduced, and uh, it may need, need even more than one. I, I don't have time here. Uh, the the uh, Husky Huxley model, the sodium, the sodium uh, conductors model, for example, requires two state variables. Okay, so in, in, but in general they are main bristles, as long as they can go through the origin.